Have you been dreaming about building a team but not sure how to do it? Stay with us to learn more right here on boston.com. Really excited about today's show. Joined by a top agent, superstar agent on Cape Cod, Mariana Costa from Dream Homes International with Keller Williams. That's right. Mariana, thank you for stopping thank by. Thank you for having me. Very happy to be here. Uh, today we're going to talk about building a real estate team. You've, mm -hmm. you've been very successful at it in a short period of time. Thank uh, you. I think before we get into that, it's really important to understand your background and, and how you got into real estate. Sure. So pretty much I got to the U.S. when I was 17 years old. Um, actually 16. I stayed from here Brazil? from Brazil and I stayed here alone at 17. So I arrived at 16 years old. The goal was to come with my mother, stay here for a couple of years. Um, being a singer in Brazil since I was like four or five years old, I just wanted to learn how to speak English. Are you and gonna take us a tune? No, kidding, <laughs> hey, who knows? You know, we don't know where this is gonna <laughs> Maybe go. Maybe at the end. We'll Maybe save that. Maybe at the end. We, stay we might with save us. it. We might <laughs> save it for a special moment. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so pretty much I stayed here because my mom decided to go back early. The idea was stay for two years and then go back home and take off with my singing career. That was the plan. About 10 months in, my mom said, we're leaving. And I said, well, I just started learning English, so I can't leave. So I stayed by myself at 17 and I started, quite honestly, just babysitting, waitressing, um, bartending uh, when I became 19 years old and cleaning homes. And when I was cleaning a house one day, I came across a check for like $38,000. And it was pretty much what I had made the entire two years I was here at that point. And I thought to myself, if this is legal, I wanna do that, like for now. So I definitely got into real estate for the money. That's not the reason why I stayed here and it's not the reason why I stayed in real estate. So we can get into that a little bit more. Sure, absolutely. So, I mean, amazing story. And I, I think you left this out, but you actually stayed in a car. You lived out of a car. I did, yeah. So when you get into the real estate business, it, it's funny because I was actually a real estate agent, homeless. Nobody knew at the time, of course. Can't use that as a marketing tool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, quite honestly, the, the reason being um, was I had to choose where my money went. Um, I needed gas to get to work. I needed gas to show houses. Um, and I didn't have that much money coming in. And I had a lot of money going out. Because when you get into real estate, you got to get your name out there. And again, I was here alone. I didn't have a circle of influence. I didn't have a database. I didn't know anybody. So I had to spend some money to be able to start making some money. And looking at only about $1,000 that I was earning on a monthly basis, I had to choose where does that thousand dollars go. So that's when I started living out of my car. And yes, I was in real estate in the very early stages of my career. For about a year, I was sleeping out of my car. Amazing story. <laughs> and what I find even more amazing is that there's so many people out there that come up with excuses or get into the industry. It, it's tough being an agent because it's 100% commission most of the time. Yes, it is. And it's tough to get you know your business up and running, but it's people stumble over call reluctance or. I don't get enough leads. Or, you, know, you came out of a story where you didn't speak the language, you were extremely young to get into the business, you were living out of a car, mm -hmm. and you still found a way to make it work. So kudos to you. I mean, that, that's you. an amazing story. And then fast forwarding, you, you're, being, you're a successful agent, you turn into one, and then a few years ago, you took your vision to a whole new level yes. and have really done a fantastic job Thank at you. creating a team. So I want you to kind of dive into, for those people out there that are in real estate, you know, why should they create a team and, and how did you do it? Well, I think first it, it really comes down to looking at whether you have a need to open a team or not. Um, for me, the way that I grew my business uh, was just by really believing in giver's gain. Again, I didn't know anybody here. And I didn't have that much money to market to get to the point where I'm at, uh, where I could actually market enough on magazines and newspapers to get going with my career. I had to do it by word of mouth. I didn't have any other option. So for me, it was really networking and coming from that giver's gain mindset of giving somebody so much value 
that they come to you for just about everything. Um, so a company that really inspired me early in my career was Buffini, Buffini and Company. Brian Buffini. Um, love, yes, Brian Buffini really helped me understand that a business could be built based upon relationships. And I ran with that. And with that said, by the age of 27, I was closing roughly 40, 45 homes by myself. Um, I was getting way more leads and way more referrals than one particular person could handle. And I actually gained about 60 pounds because I was working around the clock. I literally would wake up at like seven and I probably wouldn't go to bed until 11. And I started to a point advertising myself as the 7-Eleven of real estate because I was always available. And, and that was okay for quite some time, but what I realized is it wasn't sustainable. Um, so for me, it was growing a team was quite honestly a natural reaction to having more referrals coming into my business than I could handle alone. So I did it more for um, the client understanding that I wouldn't be able to keep up with that number of referrals for much longer. And it kept on growing. People kept referring. There were some weeks I would get more than 14 referrals in a week. And I'm like, I'm only one person to pre-qualify, to show houses, to set up appointments, to find out you know, what are the best interests that they're looking for to achieve within that purchase. And I was just finding that I wasn't able to deliver the service that I really wanted to. So growing a team for me was quite honestly a byproduct of demand. So the demand is there. Now what? I mean, it, it, how do you figure out that first person or, 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 or step to take mm -hmm. to build that team? So what the, would you recommend? So for me, the very first person I recommend you hire is someone that's going to be the VP of operations for your company eventually. Um, whenever you hire someone, you, there's two different types of talents. You have cul-de-sac talent and you have capacity talent, right? So cul-de-sac talent is somebody that's going to stay when that, within that position. And no matter how much you grow, they will always stay within that position. And that wouldn't necessarily be my choice. Um, you're really looking for someone that can grow with you. So whoever you hire, it's very important that you understand their vision. And I think that that was one thing that I did really well. Um, and it wasn't right from the get-go. I'm not perfect. I made a lot of mistakes my first two years. I hired either all the wrong people or I hired the right people, but they were doing the wrong jobs. So a lot of the times if people are not succeeding at what they're doing, it could very well be because you don't have them operating the right job description. So you can't just necessarily assume that you hire the wrong person. You could have actually hired a great person that's just doing something that they don't love. So it's very important to understand the vision of whoever you hire so that you can make sure that you can fit them within your company to allow them to see themselves growing with you. And I think that that's how you continue to stay growing is because you're growing with people. Do you hire a lot of people from within the industry or do you look outside for just pure talent, whether it be personality or work style or, or certain industry that might work well within real estate? They just don't know it. So there's pros and cons to both. I can say I've hired both. Um, today in my team, I have someone that's been, you know, in real estate for more than 35 years. And I just hired someone that is brand spanking new and has never done it before. The pros of hiring someone new is that they don't have any bad habits to break. Right. You're Makes really sense. able to teach them what they need to know right from the get-go. And I find that one thing that really keeps a lot of top agents um, from their peak productivity is all of those ha bad habits that they've gotten over the years that take some time to break. They're easy to acquire. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and they're hard to break. Hard to break. Right? Yep. So, but then when you hire a, a person that has some experience, there's some pros to that as well. They'll perhaps have a database that they've kept up with. They're going to have experience, so you don't have to train them nearly as much. So I like to see a balance of both. What does your team look like right now in regards to how it's set up? You're, you're still actively selling real estate. And, I am. And then you have a team supporting you in what fashion? So right now, about 80% of my company runs on its own. I focus on my top 20% of my tasks that will lead to 80% of the results in the company. And that usually is recruiting. 
I'm always looking to talk to anyone that has a dream of becoming a real estate agent or has a dream to grow wealth through real estate, which is what I'm doing. Um, so I'm always looking for talent. That's my number one job. Uh, my second job is, of course, helping my clients with their luxury listings. Um, because of my video exposure and because of the fact that I'm speaking um, all over the world at this point, I'm able to really connect with a lot of agents that could potentially have referrals that now go back to us on Cape Cod. And it helps me, quite honestly, match make my listings with my buyers sure. or with the agents that have those buyers. Um, and my third priority is just being a really good leader for my team. Uh, the way my team is structured to answer your question is I have a VP of operations. She pretty much runs all the operations. I can literally go to a closing with my eyes shut. I've never had a problem in the last three years I've been with her. I can literally drive to closing knowing that everything is going to be okay. And that is invaluable to any invaluable. team. Invaluable. In any business. In that, any that, business, quite important. honestly, you're yeah. right. Um, the second person that's my right arm is um, someone that helps me with client care. So she helps me get all my clients pre-qualified so that when I go to show a home, I can actually let my client know, look, we've done our research and this person is actually pre-approved to buy your home. Yeah. And you'd be amazed how many people don't do that. It's they'll amazing. set up an appointment, right. and they'll have somebody walk through your property and your seller's all excited you have a showing. And then you call with feedback saying they love the house, but they can't buy it because they weren't pre-approved. And your seller's probably thinking like, why, why, did, you didn't, yeah, why yeah. did you waste that time? And why did you get me excited? Sure. Why did you get me excited to come, right? So um, she helps me get everyone pre-approved. She helps me stay in touch with people that aren't ready. That's the other valuable key aspect of that position. We leaders um, tend to be the doers. Uh, we're not as good when it comes to follow up. True That's story. the reality, yeah. right? right? So she's my high S, high C, and I have everybody disked before they, they join my team. Oh, so cool. she's my high S, my high C, and she also has enough high I in her where she enjoys servicing and taking care of the client. So she has brought people to me that, quite honestly, she stayed in touch with for two years. I would have completely forgot about them, but she stayed in touch and she lets them know she lets my team know and she lets me know when they're ready to buy, That's, which is really awesome. It's awesome. And like you said, having this team in place allows you to step outside of your business. Correct. Um, it's amazing you've taken on so many other things, extremely successful selling real estate with your team, but you're following other passions. Um, you know, you're public speaking all over yes. the world now, yes. uh, helping others grow their teams. Uh, mentioned writing a couple books. So you have a lot going on I and do. you're able to do that because of them, because of, because what because of the right structure. So I think anyone right now that is looking to grow, the very first question they have to ask themselves is, are they ready to grow themselves? We all talk about growing businesses, but the reality is you have to grow in order for your business to grow. The very first person that has to grow is you. Um, so it really, I had to go through a really big shift in my mindset. Um, and I had to go through quite a bit of partnerships uh, with people like yourself that help you think bigger, help you dream bigger. But you can't just dream bigger. You have to have people that can help you actually achieve that and maintain it once you've achieved it. I always explain to my team, it's, it's hard to be number one, um, but it's harder to be the one and to sustain number one. Everybody can reach number one. How long will you stay there? You know, and it's that, yeah. it's that ability to sustain it that a lot of people aren't able to do unless they have the support. Um, one of the people I hired actually, and this goes back to talking about um, hiring the right person, but putting her on the wrong job. I originally hired her as a transaction coordinator, and today she actually runs the entire marketing for my company. And one of the things that people tell me is, oh my God, your brand is amazing. I love the key with the word dream. I can really see this as a great brand that you can take all over the place, and it wouldn't be where it is without her. So before letting her go, instead of looking at what she did badly, I looked at what she did really well. And so beware of having really good talent in your team and just have them in the wrong spot. Yeah. It's your job as the leader to point that out. It's no different than taking it to the field or to the ice or to the court and playing sports, right? I mean, you you got co it. coaches, if you can see talent 
um, and then find the right position for that player, it, it can make all the difference Very true. in the world. Now, um, with your business, one of your businesses, you are getting into coaching. Your Correct. coaching can teach people how to build a their, team. How to build their team. What's the best way to connect with you to learn more about that? So you can always go to idreaminternational.com. iDream International is my second company. Um, so Dream Business Solutions um, is a company that just helps people, especially if you are in the young stages of building a business and you really need that support. Or if you're now where you've built a team but your systems don't seem to be sustainable, what I'm helping people do is design software, design systems, implement strategies through coaching and through working with Dream Business Solutions that will help you sustain a very big house on top of that foundation. I coach people that are doing over $200 million a year in volume. Even though I'm only doing just shy of 20, I coach people that are doing 10 times the amount because I focused on my structure before I focused on my growth. Yeah. And a lot of people don't do that. They focus on growing before they need systems. But then they have to work backwards, which I've seen a lot of people have to do. So I coach them through that. Um, speaking is something I absolutely love to do. And I was very blessed to become one of the Keller Williams speakers for one of their biggest conventions, Family Reunion. So now that's giving me the opportunity to go into different markets, into different areas, and really coach people on how to leverage themselves through a team, through systems, and through video. And that's a key one. Video plays such a major role. Yes. That's a whole nother time. Next time you come back, we'll yes, talk about video. Yes, we can talk about that. Uh, but thank you for stopping by, Mariana. And if you want to learn more about building a team uh, or buying or selling a property on Cape Cod, uh, you can really connect with Mariana. The best way to do it is to go to dreamoncapecod.com. There's a tab for coaching whole section on real estate. You can check out a really cool website and brand. Yes. Uh, when you come back next time, we're going to talk about building your business with video. Perfect. A great opportunity. Follow her on Facebook and you'll see what we're talking about. Amazing videos communicating with clients, communicating with the community in regards to the real estate market. So check it out and you get a promise to come back. Yes, I will. And thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to inspire someone out there that's really looking to take this on. So thank you once again. Thank you. And remember, we have more tips and real estate information just like this right here on boston.com. Don't forget to like and share and we'll see you next time. Take care. Boom.